Well, hey guys, this is Graham here at therecordingrevolution.com. Hope your new year is going great. I want to do a video for you today on uh, mastering software. I'm getting requests a lot about, uh, can you do a video on mastering and maybe looking at some mastering software? And so I'm going to make a quick preface and then we're going to dive into this one a real mastering engineer that does nothing but mastering in a room that is set up for mastering with an ear that is ready to be critically listening to something that he's not mixed, that he's not recorded, and does this day in and day out, has a place in this world, and there are pros that are doing this for the top-level talent, and they're doing a great job. And a mastering plugin doesn't replace a mastering engineer in his room with his gear, with his experience and his ear, which is the key. That's my first preface. Second preface is mastering plugins are amazing and they're super powerful, but they're dangerous tools because you can really jack up your mix and actually make it worse if you just start playing around with it. So everything I show you is just to show you so you can learn and I want you to get your hands dirty. Um, but it may be that mastering your own stuff isn't for you. It may be for somebody else. It may be for a professional. Um, there's a whole article I wrote on the blog called Does My Album Need Mastering? And it sort of addresses the uh, the overhype of mastering and even the downplay of mastering and tries to find a, uh, a balance in the middle. So go read that at therecordingrevolution.com. But for now, let's take a look at Ozone. Ozone is a mastering software plugin that I use um, and there's lots of them out there but it's one that I've had for a long long time and I've grown with it and really find it helpful um, when I'm sculpting sounds and what it is is a plugin that incorporates really six plugins um, I'm gonna get rid of this preset view here but at the bottom you've got six different tools and each one is used in a chain that everything going through this plugin is filtered through if you want to use it or not. You don't have to use them all. They're all off by default, but by clicking these little green buttons, they come on. So again, you may not need all six plugins um, for your mastering session, but you have them available to you. You have a graphic EQ, which is pretty self-explanatory. You have a, a multi-band harmonic exciter, which is really cool. It sort of adds... Um, I mean, it, exciting is the best word for it, but it adds sort of high frequency distortion um, that really makes your ear go, oh, wow, that sticks out, and it adds a sweetness to some of your, your frequencies. A mastering reverb, which is actually very interesting. Uh, Multiband compressor and limiter, which is to be expected, where you can do compression on just specific frequencies. So you could compress just the low end or compress just the mids, or what have you. And that's helpful if you're a mastering engineer and you don't have access to the multi-track mix, and you can only really adjust the stereo file. Your overall limiter, your loudness maximizer, and then a stereo widener, which is really cool. That really can take your mix and make it sound wider than the speakers. And that's why a lot of pro mixes sound huge, bigger, wider, um, and even when you're panning things hard left and right, you can't get those guitars any wider. Um, something like this helps trick your mind to think that it's wider than it is. So what I want to do is just show you a little bit of using some of these effects, and then we'll sort of bypass it, and you can hear the difference. And uh, we'll take a look. Here I've got a song. This is just a 24-bit stereo bounce. So it's a uh, stereo track, and it's bounced down. It's the final mix. It's a conservative level. It's not very loud. Uh, but it's still 24-bit because I'm in a 24-bit Pro Tools session using Ozone at a high resolution, okay? So you get, it's just rocking. Big, full drums, big everything. So what I want to do is just sort of bring this track to life a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of EQ, some harmonic exciter, maybe the multiband compressor, and definitely the limiter and the stereo imager, and I'll show you how real quick. Um, I'm just going to show you these tools so you can hear them in effect. So real subtle there, a little boost around 250, a little 
shelf up here in the high end. Take a look at the Exciter. And what I'm doing here is selecting the different bands, which you can adjust, by the way, of what frequency range. And I'm just adding a little bit amount of this Exciter. And it's, it's a subtle effect. If you add too much, your ears will get used to it, and then you won't hear it anymore, and then you'll want more, and you'll want more, and then you're really just jacking up your mix. I'm going to go over to the, uh, the multiband compressor. And here I'm probably going to just compress the low end a little bit and see if I can boost that. So I'm going to set the threshold, ratio, and makeup gain, just like you would on any typical compressor, but I'm only doing it to frequencies between 20 hertz and 135 hertz. Now that's extreme. I've boosted like 8 dB of gain on everything from 135 below because I'm compressing that area. You can take a listen to it with and without. And if you're listening to this critically, you're going to hear these subtle differences a little bit better. Um, and then let's, let's move on to uh, the multiband stereo imaging tool. This is really just a widener. So you can choose which bands. Usually I won't widen the low frequency because I want that bass to sit nice in the middle. But I'll widen some of these bands a little bit. Turn it on. And then finally, um, I'm not going to mess with the mastering reverb, but a little caveat on this. This can be very helpful when you've got multiple tracks, obviously all your mixes in a row, and you want them all to have some uniform sound. You can, you can add a little bit of reverb to all the tracks, even though your mix is done, and it gives them all a similar subtle sense of space that actually might make them sound more unified if the mixes were vastly different. So it can be helpful. Today I'm just going to use the uh, loudness maximizer as the last little plug-in. So obviously you can crank the gain there. I'm going to dial it back down. But what you can see is you have all these tools available to you. And the thing you want to do is is sort of bypass it and see what you've been doing. So what I'm going to do is press play, and then I'm going to get rid of – I won't actually be using the loudness maximizer because that just makes it louder. But I'm going to get rid of all the subtle effects, and you'll hear it sort of sink to the middle and lose some of that presence. difference and that's even without limiting that's obviously we over boosted the low end that's going to have a lot of excitement to your ears a little bit of harmonic exciter the eq is a little bit of boosting and it's wider um, and it's really really cool to hear sort of that widening that's one of my favorites because it really expands the mix a little bit more but that gives you an idea of what these little tools within ozone or very similar mastering plugins are doing to your stereo mix and to, to use these tools appropriately, you have to know where you're going and why you even want to use the tools, just like when you're mixing. Just because you have, you know, delays, compressors, EQs, um, analog saturation effects, just because you have those and you see people using them doesn't mean you know how to mix, right? It's the same thing with a mastering plugin or mastering tools or outboard gear. Um, they are tools that if you learn and know what you want to accomplish, you can sculpt the sound, and it can be very, very helpful. But you can obviously very quickly destroy a perfectly good mix. And that's why I hesitated to show this to you guys, because a lot of people kept asking, mastering, mastering, mastering. And the big question isn't, is mastering going to fix my song? It's not going to do that. You really want to focus on a better recording technique, better arrangement, better performance, and better mix. Um, those four elements are way more important than throwing a mastering plugin on there. It can't save it at the end of the day. 
it can make it louder and maybe sound more exciting, but it's going to get really irritating quickly because it's not going to be a musical mix. So use this as a tool if you have one or demo something like Ozone. But really, if you're having issues with your mix, go back to the song, remix it, maybe rethink how you recorded it, or maybe the song needs a better arrangement or the performance just wasn't stellar. All right. So that's my only real caveat on this. But again, Ozone is a super helpful tool. Love it. Use it. Hope this helps you guys out. Again, this is Graham here at therecordingrevolution.com. Have an awesome weekend and leave a comment here on the video or on the blog if you're checking it out. Let me know what you think.